everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. Today I'd like to talk to you about how my more rare or uncommon plants are coping with the lower humidity in my home. As I mentioned in a previous video, I haven't actually been running my humidifiers for, it must be at least six months now. Due to the cost of living and the prices of everything going up, I decided to cut back on a few things and I thought I would experiment with not really using the humidifiers and seeing how all the plants kind of cope with the lower humidity. At the moment it is I think 39% humidity in this room. I do have the central heating on as well. So I'm just going to go around and show you how all the plants are doing. So as you can see, the um, Alocasia cupria does not seem bothered at all by the lack of humidity. No crispy bits and it's all looking very healthy and happy. My Gloriosum, I would say, has never really thrived in this room. I mean, it's always producing new leaves, but I wouldn't say it's thriving. But again, it's not um, like crispy or anything. This plant was one of my main concerns because it is one of my favourites and one of my rarest plants. This is the Alocasia Mellow. So far, I'd say it's looking pretty perfect. I think this leaf here is about to drop as it's kind of going slightly yellow. This particular Alocasia only seems to keep about three leaves at one time and it really doesn't like being overwatered, so I water it very, very sparingly and I do actually have another one of these but it went dormant which is a bit of a shame so that one's up in my office but so far this one has been doing really well it was sat right next to the humidifier still in the same place just without the humidity so let's move on to this sad looking anthurium this is a forgetii and as you can see this one definitely does not appreciate low humidity it's still growing, it's still producing new leaves, but every time a new leaf comes out, it looks perfect for a little while and then it just goes really crispy. So this particular anthurium, I wouldn't recommend unless you've got quite high humidity. And then if you look at a more common anthurium, I have the Clarinervium. These are fine in low humidity, no crispy bits. These are pretty easy to care for, low maintenance. But some of the rarer anthuriums really are not very good with um, low humidity. And then here we have my Florida Beauty, which was originally a two leaf cutting with pretty much no variegation whatsoever. And this one has gone absolutely mad. In fact, I haven't even looked at this new leaf. I do need to repot this plant in the spring and give it a proper moss pole. But in regards to humidity, it doesn't seem bothered at all and it seems pretty happy to me. So I would recommend this plant if you're looking for something a bit more uncommon in your collection that doesn't thrive on high humidity. All my epipremnums are looking lovely lots of nice variegation and no crispy leaves so again these seem to do very well in low humidity i've got another one on the other side of the room that i'll show you my alocasia black velvet is still going strong as you can see this one i've had for many years and it has never gone dormant although it was looking a little bit leggy i did have it over that side of the room underneath um, the grow light there. So I've just moved it back to the windowsill where it was originally. So yeah, it's looking a bit leggy, but still looking pretty happy. And again, this is a good one um, for low humidity conditions. My Burley Marks is also looking very nice. Lots of lovely variegation. I've moved this one around a few times. It used to be in my office, um, but then I moved it here during the summer where it gets some nice bright indirect light. 
This is a west facing window. I will do a garden update for you soon. I need to show you all the damage that the frost has caused to my garden. But it'll soon be spring and then hopefully everything will bounce back. So over here in the corner, we've got a philodendron billetie, or some people pronounce it billetai. And actually, I can't believe how much this plant has grown because I think originally it only had maybe two leaves. Or maybe it was one leaf, I can't remember. I'll have to go back on my Instagram and have a look. And now it's absolutely huge. It is under a grow light. Uh, unfortunately, this little bit here was because it was touching the grow light. So this isn't from lack of humidity because I had it on a little table, but now I've moved it onto the floor. Again, I need to repot this plant and give it a new climbing pole. It seems to be coping really well with the lack of humidity. Here's my other pinnatum, looking rather nice. This is a Florida ghost. This has grown so much. This was just a cutting off one of my other Florida ghosts. And yeah, the leaves are absolutely huge now. So this one looks like it's doing great without the humidity. I love how this one looks. It's so wild looking and it grows so quickly. Um, if you want the leaves to come out like white, it needs a lot more light than what it's getting here. So if your Florida ghost is not producing white leaves, it's because it's not getting enough light. Mine usually come out like a bright, vibrant, pale green, and then they'll darken as the leaf matures. So over here in this corner, we've got another Clarinervium. We've got a Magnificum hybrid, which is actually not looking too bad. It's not really gone crispy, but it's not getting enough light, which is why it's kind of facing up the way <laughs> towards the grow light. So I might actually move this one back into my office. My Cecestis is actually looking quite nice. Um, I've had a little bit of trouble with this one over the years. I think I've had it, oh, is it two years now, I think? Um, I had a problem with the leaves just kind of going yellow and dropping. Um, but this, this leaf seems to be looking quite nice and as you can see it's got no crispy bits on it. So this one appears to be quite happy in lower humidity conditions. My Melanochrysum is dropping a leaf. In fact that one looks a little bit yellow as well. So I'm not sure if it's quite happy here or not. It's been here for a while but all of a sudden it seems to be going a little bit yellow. This leaf's okay, this is the newest leaf. But again, in regards to humidity, I think it's fine. I do have another one in my office that I'll show you. Here's the hygrometer. So it's now 40% humidity and the temperature is 23 degrees Celsius. So here we are in my office upstairs and I'll show you how the plants have been doing without the humidifier. So, it does seem to be a little bit more humid in here, 46, and the temperature's about the same as downstairs. I have had a little issue with thrips over the past week. So unfortunately, my variegated Monstera um, is not looking its best. I had to chop a couple of leaves off it that had gone really brown and crispy, and that's because of the thrips, unfortunately. And they'd also gone onto my Soderoi and the Syngonium, but I basically quarantined all the plants that had thrips, um, sprayed them with Provanto, which in my opinion is the only thing that really works for thrips. They are the worst bug to deal with. If you'd like me to do an updated video on thrips and bugs and how to get rid of them, let me know. But I have tried many things over the years. So I've got another Penatum up here with beautiful variegation doing fine without the humidity. This beautiful anthurium here actually belongs to Zahir, who owns Foliage Fanatic. And this is the newest leaf, which is really large. Um, again, it actually seems to be doing quite well without the humidity, but I'd actually prefer it to go somewhere with um, much higher humidity. So 
I do need him to um, come and get it because I think it'll be much happier with him. But luckily it's doing okay. Again, we've got another Penatum here. Uh, this is my Paraiso Verde with beautiful variegation. This is another one that I need to repot and um, put a proper moss pole in as well, because at the moment it's just climbing up a little bit of bamboo. <laughs> um, but it seems um, pretty happy with the lower humidity as well. All the Syngoniums are doing fine. This is a pink splash. Um, so this is an Anthurium regal and as you can see it doesn't even have a leaf and it's also in a big glass jar as well because I was having problems with the roots and it was actually growing quite well in this glass jar but unfortunately as soon as um, the leaf kind of matures it then starts to um, go crispy and yellow. Again, this is a anthurium that needs really high humidity in my opinion and from my experience. So if you're looking for a low maintenance anthurium, the Regal is probably not for you. All the plants on the back wall are looking fine. These are quite low maintenance plants. This is my other Cupria. I can't believe how many leaves it's got. And then it's got some little baby ones up there. My silver satin pothos has attached itself to the wall in about five different places. Um, this is my fastest growing houseplant that I own. I've had it for, must be about four, four years. And it just started off probably about this long. And it's grown down, attached itself to the wall gone all the way along there. I can't even actually work out what, what's going on with it. So if you're looking for a low maintenance hanging plant and a plant that shingles, I would recommend the silver satin. So I just wanted to show you my other melanochrysum that wasn't really doing very well and then all of a sudden it kind of grew about three foot and then just started growing leaves right at the top. So. I really need to propagate this plant because it goes all the way down into this pot here. So that is on my list for springtime as well, propagate and repot and give it a moss pole. My Anthurium radicans hybrid has always looked a little bit crispy. So this to me doesn't really look any different. And as you can see, it has tons and tons of growth points. I do have a few plants that I'm trying to regrow or that have gone dormant. That's my silver dragon, Alocasia. And I think that is another mellow there in the corner. Got another pink splash there. That was a cutting. That in the corner is my beautiful Waro Quianum, which obviously enjoys very high humidity. So I might either have to rehome that or look at somehow getting it high humidity. And then the other plants I'm trying to regrow are a Philodendron Luxuriens and a Soderoi AFF, I believe. I'm still using my Spider Farmer Grow Lights. It is really actually quite dark in this room without them, so they are absolutely amazing and all in all I'd say most of the plants are looking pretty good considering I haven't put the humidifiers on for at least six months and I just wanted to show you kind of how they're looking and um, kind of guide you on what kind of plants can happily thrive in lower humidity conditions but I will keep you updated on their progress and if they do need a little humidity boost, there are ways you can achieve this without using humidifiers. I actually did make a video on this um, probably about three years ago, but I could make an updated video if you're interested. Also, let me know how you guys have been coping with the cost of living. Have you cut back on certain things with your plants like the grow lights, humidifiers, and how you've kind of been coping with it? And if you've got any tips, feel free to share them below with us. 
any questions leave them below in the comments thank you so much for watching everyone i really hope you enjoyed the video take care everyone and i'll see you all soon